Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 93. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the 4 by 4 risk assessment matrix. In the previous episode, we talked about the 3 by 3 risk assessment matrix. Um, again, it would be awesome if we could tackle every hazard that we ever found as quick as possible, but time and money are just not endless. So we have to come up with a system where we can say we get the most bang for the buck. What what are going to be the things that we work on and the things that we don't work on? And by don't work on, it doesn't mean that we bury our heads in the sand. We add it to a list because as we as we knock off things of a higher level, higher consequence, other ones now rise to the surface. So it doesn't mean that we don't address it. That means that it's just a lower um It's just lower on the list as far as hazard and severity and all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and get into it. This is going to continue our um, risk assessment um, series here. We're going to be talking uh, for this next couple of ones about just just how do we go about doing this? And some of them are really easy. Some of them are really hard. But the key is find something that works for you and your company. So it's not some weird, strange animal uh, if it's something that's being uh, introduced for the first time. So let's just get right into the four four by four. So it's just a way of categorizing and uh, your uh, likelihood and um, uh, severity. You'll also hear terms called uh, like impact and consequence and frequency and all that. Um, whatever whatever works for you and your company. Um, because again, it's not it's not some um, strange, scary thing. So the three three the uh, three by three was a very short and easy one, just to kind of get everybody uh, started. When we get into the four by four, it adds a little more uh, details to it. Uh, it doesn't mean it's harder, but that's just a, that's just another another way, another level of going back and saying what you will and you won't address. And this is also what helps out a uh, company, of course, whether whatever whatever system is uh, used out there for them to say what is and what is not acceptable as far as risk. So let's just uh, look right at a few examples here. Let's get into the uh, first one where we talk about the um, things like likelihood and consequence. So with likelihood, you'll also hear where at times it's called probability, frequency, all that good stuff then. And with severity, it can also be called consequence and impact. There's a lot of interchangeable words out there. So uh, let's look at the first one here. So the um, likelihood or probability, it can be on a scale of one to four, one being very low, too low, three is moderate, and four is high. And when we look at the probability, of course, you know, it, it, it kind of follows exactly what the words say. It's a very low um, probability that it's going to happen or very high probability. When we look at severity or consequence, again, it kind of goes from very low, low, you know, moderate and high. This is when we it, it starts to um, talk about harm and damage and all that good stuff. So uh, when something happens, is it a very low, uh, that minimal harm and damage, or is it going to be a high or a significant harm and damage? When we look at the matrix on this one here, we're going to add in just a little math then. So every, um, for folks who, who who uh, cannot see this, of course, what we have is the uh, likelihood and uh, severity in a four by four. Um, And so, of course, four by four is going to equal 16 individual blocks. And so when we look at the 16 blocks, we're going to, as we add in some math, the very low and low is going to be in green. Very low is going to be a one. Low is two. Um, that moderate is three and high is four. So when we think about it, if you did a, a four times four is 16, so that's a very high risk. Or if you did a uh, one times one, it's going to be a very low, which is going to be a one. And it kind of follows um, a color pattern. So anything that's a low is going to be in green. Medium low is going to be a yellow. Medium high is going to be an orange. And then finally high is just uh, is going to be in red. This is just a way to 
go back and to uh, look at color coding and adding some math in um, when we look at um, the matrix here. And so what we have is those four four separate levels in. So a very low risk is going to uh, represent that it's a very high, that it will not occur. And if it does occur, then minimum harm. Low, of course, means that it's there's a very low chance it's going to happen, and it's going to cause some minimal harm then. Moderate, of course, moderate chance of happening with moderate harm. High, high chance of happening with high harm then. Let's go over a couple of practical examples then. So uh, this isn't anything that's going to be a right or wrong answer. This is just kind of for us to kind of sit down and think that now that we've been introduced to this, we have the four, four, four by four, um, the matrix then. As in uh, a lot of things with safety, we have to look at the nuances. Which are going to be at my facility? And what, what have you already put in place? Or what things have you not, not put in place? So let's look at a couple of practical examples. So the first one here, we're going to be drilling some carbon fiber plates. So when we do that, you know, we, we want to look, look at, well, what do we have in place already? Are we exhausting the environment? Or is it that we know that we have to put people in um, uh, PPE of some sort then? So again, the nuance that we have to look at for our um, for our work site and we have to get input from the workers. So I can write fantastic ones and tell everybody exactly what the risk is and do the math. But if it's not really based on what the guys do out there in the, in the, uh, uh, field or the factory floor or the chemical lab, it just, it just really isn't something based on a, a real scenario. So let's look at the second one here. So changing oil on company uh, vehicles then. So uh, when we think about changing oil, is, is it going to be done in a very controlled environment inside of a maintenance shop? Or does the guy have to uh, lay down some, um, some mats and things and crawl underneath a, uh, a vehicle in the mud over at a field site then? So Again, we have two different ways, and that's why that we have to look at the nuance then uh, when we go ahead and do this then. So the third one, driving the front end loader. So um, we have to look at the consequence and severity. Uh, also in this, of course, we want to we wanna also look at how do we train people at the same time then? You know, some people are uh, coming to the workforce are, uh, um, uh, already trained by somebody else. And other people are showing up really depending on us to train them the right way to go back and do this stuff. On the fourth one, we're going to be cutting granite countertops then. So uh, you can think about it. Are we doing it in a controlled fashion right at the factory itself? And uh, we're using we're using water, water saw. We're doing all that stuff. Or is it something that uh, they're going to do uh, in a dry environment then with the dry saw then, right? I mean, how are we really going back and doing this and protecting the people? And in, in these practical examples, there is no right or wrong answer. These are just things for us to think about and the nuances that we have. And also think about a couple of the scenarios that you have at your company and then what, um, what you would do to go back and kind of think about jazzing up and making things better for the folks. That is it for episode number 93, the 4x4 Risk Assessment Matrix. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Uh, we're going to continue on in the next couple of ones as in our risk assessment journey, we'll call it, looking at different ways that we're going to go back there because we want to get the most bang for the buck with our time and effort along with the company time and effort. So episode number 93 is complete. My name is Dr. David Ayers. Thank you for joining me and have a safe day.